So congratulations, good award uh, to win. Why do you think you won this award? Well, I've been slightly scratching my head. Um, I mean, I work very hard like most MPs, um, and I suppose a, a big part of the work I've been doing has been to try and try and engage more people in politics. And I've been trying to do that at this end in Parliament through you know, attempting to reform the way we do politics and also reaching out and encouraging people to get involved. So I, I, that, that, I think, is an element. And that's very much the heart of what patchwork is all about. It's about engaging people from all kinds of backgrounds in the political process. So I think, you know, you have to talk to the judges. But that, I think that's, that's a part of it. And what are the groups that you have been particularly targeting to help in your Richmond constituency? Well, Groups are hard to define, but types of people. So I've been, I've been to, um, I mean, I try in my constituency to get in touch and get involved and engage with all areas of the community. But there are, it's a, it's a quite an odd constituency because it, the, the net average wealth is very high, Richmond Park and North Kingston. But you have areas of what are always written off as areas of deprivation, but which are deprived by any standard, no matter where you look in the country. So you've got this incredible gulf, and as a consequence, there are areas that are overlooked whenever it comes to government grants, for example. And I think the fact is that if, you are, if you're at the bottom of the ladder in an affluent area, it's tougher than if you're at the bottom of the ladder in a less affluent area, and I'm, I mean, there's lots of data to support that. So my job has been to try and try and access and tap into and engage with people who, you know, who otherwise have not engaged in, in politics. What do you say to those people who might express surprise that you, a Conservative MP, wealthy, privileged background, have got this ability to connect with the more deprived members of the community? I, do, I mean, I remember being asked at the beginning when I first stood as an MP, you know, how could I possibly relate to all the people who are going to be coming and knocking on my door during my surgeries? Um, and, I, and I get that, because I do come from a very privileged background, but I don't believe that anyone can be properly prepared, no matter where they come from, for the variety of things that turn up at their MP surgery. So, you know, this morning I had a, 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 an early surgery with someone whose details I can't go into now, but ex who ex has experienced injustice on a scale which I hope I'll never have to experience and which I suspect most people in Parliament, I suspect all people in Parliament, will have not had to deal with in their own personal lives. And if you look at the sheer range of problems that are brought to my office, uh, it would be it, practically, mathematically impossible to have experienced all those uh, injustices, all those problems as an individual. The job of an MP is to find a way through, to, to solve problems, to you know, learn what avenues you need to go down, what doors you need to knock on, what levers you have to pull. That's, that's what being an MP is about, and, and having empathy. And if you don't have empathy, there's no point being an MP. Does your empathy go as far as anger when you see a huge injustice, perhaps like the case that came before you this morning? Oh, yeah. Do you get angry and does that then drive yeah. you and motivate you to want to use the parliamentary processes to do something about Ab it? Absolutely right. I don't, I mean, if, you know, if I wake up, I remember my, my dad gave me a badge when I was very young. He just didn't often give, give out badges, but this was a particular, someone must have given it to him and it said, if you're not peed off, you're not paying attention. And I think that um, I think that is very, very, <laughs> it's very, very true. But you know, if you're not if you're not angry about injustice, or either on a tiny scale or on a macro scale, then you shouldn't really be in politics. I mean, if it was a perfect world, would we want to be in politics? I don't think I would want to be in politics. You mentioned earlier about your desire to reform certain aspects of Parliament, and we had the recall bill mm. not so long ago, uh, where you were defeated, but you got I think it was about 160 votes, which yeah. was which was quite considerable. Were you surprised at the the way in which the establishment voted against you, and 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 do you feel that 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 whenever you try to effect any radical change in the yeah. way that politics is written, there is a tendency for the bulk of MPs to come together to say, sorry, that's a change too far. Yeah. I mean, there was a moment where I thought I might even win this campaign a few weeks ago, um, but on the day itself, I knew that wasn't going to happen, and the prediction was that it would be much lower levels of support than we actually saw. So I ended up feeling that 166 was a result. But I think the debate has moved on. I've noticed that PCC, PPCs, you know, candidates all around the country for all the different parties are pledging their support for proper, meaningful reform.
reform, which means that this is becoming more of an election issue. It means that after the next election, if there's some new blood in Parliament, we'll have moved even further towards genuine, meaningful reform. But it was, look, it was depressing. The debate was even more depressing than the outcome in the vote because there were MPs from all sides of the House who were speaking a language which I think betrayed an absolute terror of their own voters. I and mean, that's all recall is. It's about trusting voters to hold MPs to account at all times. It happens in 30 countries around the world. It's not that revolutionary. It's not that radical. Um, but there was this extraordinary resistance. And I, I felt that there were really quite a lot of MPs, as we see in the numbers anyway, who are terrified of being um, properly held to democratic account you know, in, in, in the circumstances which would not be considered unusual in countries around the world. And, and there was also, there was a, it's, at times there was almost a contempt, I felt, for voters. You know, the same arguments that were used, no doubt, all those years ago to deprive women of the vote. You know, they're not educated enough. They can be whipped up into a frenzy by vested interest. They don't really know what they're talking about. All the same kind of patronizing arguments that would have been used then were used again in the context of recall. So it was very depressing. And there were times when I was sitting there listening and I didn't, I couldn't even bring myself to get up and intervene. But that said, it was a step forward, not a step back. And I feel that you know the change is inevitable. So there is momentum. Definitely. And you won't be giving up the fight. Oh, no, so. definitely not. This is, look, I mean, I, I didn't set out thinking it would be easy um, or even that I would win this campaign. But there were moments I felt that I would. But I didn't believe it at the beginning. I just felt that this was a stake in the ground that was necessary. Um, and it's a, it's a part of a process. By the way, recall is just one of the reforms that's necessary. You know, I could have won this campaign and there would still be many more things to do to really improve our democracy, to really keep MPs on their toes, to encourage responsiveness. And Would you go so far as to say MPs are out of touch? Yeah, I think many MPs are out of touch. We have a structure here that after you're elected, all the pressure from the constituency vanishes for five years. There's nothing people can do to hold you to account. And all the pressure then comes from the top, from your party. And if you think that an MP's job is really only one thing, it's to hold government to account on behalf of constituents, it, the, the pressure is such that you're not going to do your job if you're an ambitious MP. The very last thing I'm going to do if I want promotion is to hold people to account on whom I depend for that promotion. So there's a, there is a structural problem there, and which is why I think recall is important, because it, it balances that power. It gives voters the three-line whip, as well as your party hierarchy. It, just, it's a, it is a small change, but it's, it's, it's a necessary one, in my view. Well, Sad Goldsmith, good luck with the campaign. Thank and you very much. And thanks very much for talking to us about your special award today. Well, thank you very much.